Hello, ladies and gents, and welcome to the first cast of Evacuation, a map that I and my map team have worked on to use in the main event of Hidden Cup 5. We are using this map, as well as many others in the main event, which will be February 25th through March 3rd, and all the best players in the world will be hidden on Hero Identities. But I could talk more about that. We've got some games here, and I've got lots to talk about on what is a really, really fun map. So... Basically, the concept of evacuation, as you could probably tell, is that as a player, you start on an area which is very much barren. Uh, you're on cracked terrain, there's very few trees, and while you do have enough resources to work with to get started, eventually, there's a lot of reason to leave this place and go out here. And over here, you know, the earth's not cracked. <laughs> there's grass, there's deer, there's there's plenty of, of resources available. And so, uh, you know, if the game goes long, this is where you want to end up being. Yes. Now, in the blue here, you've got myself, T90 official, playing as the Byzantines. And then in the red, we have a, one of the players who put a lot of time and training into helping me test versions for this map. So basically, um, in order to have a really good competitive map, you need to have good competitive players, and you need to have good games. So, for the last couple weeks, after casting the qualifier, I would be watching games that other people on the team played, or playing games myself. Um, because I just, you know, it would suck to have a map in the tournament suck. And uh, while I thought on paper this map is good, you gotta play it out, right? So, um, this was one of the early versions. So, this is actually a bit different than... Uh, the main event version. Basically, uh, and I'll talk more about this. You see this situation with the boar and the berries. Notice how mine is a bit further away. Notice how it's a bit different. We, we've added consistency there, and I can talk more about what the finished product is going to have, right? But the main concept is similar, and this is a really fun game, so I figured I'd just kind of bring it to you. Uh, but it was important for me to mention that this was kind of one of the early versions. I think we had maybe 10 different test versions of each map. So, um, let's talk about it. So, you know, immediately, once we came up with the idea, I was thinking Armenians would be pretty strong. Because the Armenians and Georgians, the only two civs that get this mule cart. And if the wood is going to run out very quickly, having this move around with you is going to be really helpful. Now, the fish on this map, they are uh, towards the backside. You will not have a lot of deep fish towards the crossings here. Um, so you can see I've, I've back docked. And he's going to back talk as well. I think this is going to happen pretty much every single time. Um, What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. The, the other thing about Armenians, which could be really cool, is the uh, mule cart also lets you drop off hunt. So you could, in theory, take like wood here and hunt here as well. Now, in some of the games that I played uh, and, and tested and, and, of course, watched, uh, some players actually left their starting eco right away. Like some people said, why even chop wood here? when I could just leave and chop wood out here. But I think that it is just too far of a walk, and it is important to use the wood near your TC. But I don't know. It's it's going to be fun to see how players play and, and what players figure out with their testing. And I'm really excited to see how things end up going here. So my thinking was, and this game is, is like two weeks old, but still my thinking was Byzantines, so good in late game, so good on water. So I have the the faster fires. I also have the really solid late game. But you could tell I've already scouted the outside. And I'm looking to see what's out here. And looking to see if he's going to take anything out here in this area. And it's it's good to have that scouting, I think, just in general. So if you want to attack there later on, you know. But uh, this map is somewhat hybrid. But everyone's going to have fishing ships. So players are going to move out and try and deny those fish. And so right now, I'm thinking, let's scout that. And the theme in all my maps, a thing I'm a big believer in, this is going to blow your mind. You ready? Age of Empires 2 is a strategy game. That's right. It's a strategy game. I feel like people forget about that sometimes. Scouting and decision making based on that scouting is really important, which is why a lot of the maps in Hidden Cup, on top of the hidden aspect, have lots of different things you can try, different things you can do. Now, at this point in time, there was not consistency with the deer spawning. The version in the main event of Hidden Cup will have deer and berries right here. So it's like berries, deer next to it, and then the boars usually like five to ten tiles beyond that. 
So I was hoping to take deer, and I scouted with the cow and didn't find anything. But it's tricky because right now, I'm trying to go fire ships, and I'm trying to go potentially archers. And I, I want to take food so badly because it's out there. But I really need wood. <laughs> it is a really complicated map to play. Notice what Pepper's doing. Pepper did move out here with the meal cart to take gold. So it was choosing not to take the two tile golds here. And I mean, the wood is running out, but still wood income is decent for Pepper. And Pepper goes for two docks. So yeah, variety of different approaches is kind of what we want. I did collect food for a little while, and I'm going to just place the lumber camp now. We'll get the food that those villagers are holding. It always happens. If you're holding food and you build a lumber camp or a mining camp, you will get it. I didn't lose it there. And now I've got a lot on wood. Now I've got a decent amount on gold. But it's interesting the timing of my scouting, right? Like, I'm double checking. I'm like, okay, he's got two docks. Good to know. I check the front of his base. He doesn't have a barracks yet. So I'm feeling like I can have an edge on land. But now he's over here. So it's interesting as well. He took gold there for a second and now moved over here to wood. So that, that's what the mule cart can do for you. That's why I think Armenians are going to be really strong here. You can see Georgians being a solid pick as well. Now he's going galley opening. And galleys are fantastic with the Armenians. They're really hard to kill. But if the game gets messy, then the, uh, Arme the, the galley player can always struggle. And I have an archer range already. So you know, I, I could potentially mess him up a little bit here on land. So that's why my fish were on the back. Here I go with the first fire galley. Now what's interesting is we, we intentionally didn't add a lot of the deep fish where the crossing is. Because I didn't want the player who has control of the fish to also have control of the crossing. So, uh, as I'm hoping to build an outpost here just to get some vision on what could come in. I'm actually sending my fire galley this way because I scouted he was on two docks and knew that he would send everything the other way. That's the common approach. So the goal obviously is to keep my fish alive and kill his fish. And my scout there just scouted and saw that he was on wood. So I now have knowledge that he is here. Have knowledge he's going to galleys. And then he has knowledge that I'm going archers. So he is walling because he's terrified those archers could do something. Now look at this evacuation here. <laughs> I love it. That's the name of the map. I'm so proud of myself. Even I kind of forgotten some of the details about this game. And so I'm like, yeah, this is perfect. Now you know what's not perfect is that he's got galleys out ready to kill my fish. That's a problem for me. But uh, I killed two villagers with less navy than him because of keeping an eye on this area. Also, here comes two archers and a spearman. But he evacuated because of the... Uh, he evacuated because of the scouting that he had. And he knew this was going to be coming. So, he drops the tower over here. Uh, it's going to take boar... And, you know, things are going to be neat and tidy over there for him, I suppose. And it's been a great start for me. It's been a really great start for me. Now, Pepper played more than a lot of the players in our test group. So I think he... This wasn't his first game. And we were always trying something new. Now, it took him a long time to finally find benefit for these galleys. Which brings me back to my point from before. You just take, take so long to mass them. And Byzantine fires are good enough. It feels like you can find some moments with them. Here I am again. And I'm going to find another villager pick. Potentially. But obviously there's micro going on elsewhere. And I suck. So I miss that. And I'm just going to sit here on the gold. For the time being. Still running around. Still making him work with some fires. He did kill some fishing ships though. And my fire galley from the crossing. The MVP of the game. He has made his way over here, but Fire Galley is going to get shot down. Pepper's Micro is looking really, really strong right now. And it seems likely I'm going to lose water. But look, he doesn't have a single farm, right? No farming eco for him. For me, I'm farming away 10 farms. And I, I think, like, in general, I'm going to show you at the end of this video an approach, which I think players may try, which is going to be phenomenal. But I think in general, in terms of the Feudal Age strategy... I think the galley approach, only the very best players can get away with it. I think it is just so, so complicated to get the value from it. I do think my approach 
makes it easier for things like this. And so we'll probably see a lot of fire galleys. But uh, yeah, these two archers still running around. He's going to go into skirmishers. I've collected a thousand more resources. But over here, there's villagers collecting deer. There's villagers collecting gold and wood. It is very messy, but it is still happening. And for me, uh, at various points, I actually had pulled off of wood to go over here to berries. Because I need food, right? I don't really need wood. So, cracked terrain in Age of Empires. If you have buildings on cracked terrain, they go down faster. Um, they, they take more damage. So, uh, like, siege pushing on this island is very, very strong because everything's on cracked terrain. It's an interesting thing. I don't think a lot of people know that. I'm still trying to keep my fires alive. Now, you see that regroup there from, from Pepper. This was pay, uh, played prior to the patch that Microsoft has given us for the main event of Hidden Cup. So the regrouping also is the reason why galleys were probably horrible because the regrouping was just abysmal here at times when he would click his units around. But, you know, I don't have fish anymore. So I don't want to, like, fight him because, I mean, what am I even protecting? And I'm on the way to Castle H here, trying to find my way over towards his side as he chases me down. So, I played a lot of games. I wanted to bring you a good one. I can promise you, this is a good one. The res collected right now, looking very good for me. But I don't have land army anymore because his skirmishers cleared that up. Now, I think outposting through the middle, again, another thing that's so nice with Byzantines. I think this would be very important. And so, I've done that now, so I know... That he's got pressure coming over. Now, I'm not taking gold on the outside right now. And my other gold's very far forward here. And I don't really have an army that can deal with this. So I'm going to fight this off with Vils for the time being. Did try and redock because I wanted to send fires in towards his fishing eco. Because usually when you win water, like he has, you're going to add fishing ships. And he's doing that right now. And this army, doing a nice job, be annoying. Pulling back the weak villagers is not fun. And I was thinking, uh, you know, we're going to go knights. And just, just one or two knights could be really effective at pushing, you know, at attacking his mainland or even clearing up this army. But again, it's a complicated map to play. I also had just casted for eight hours before this uh, some qualifier games. So, you know, it was like 10 or 11 p.m. for me. I was, I was a little tired, but hey. We didn't lose anything there. You guys are impressed, right? Look at this Woody Co. Ugh! Woody Co is just brutal. Uh, War Galley upgrade coming in for me. I do have four fires still out on the map. I guess they're not out on the map yet. I've got two in here and then two in here. And my thinking is this will go late. But one night and four fires can just change the game. I mean, he's not. he hasn't even clicked up yet been really smooth play for us and now he's gonna have to work hard because those galleys there's what 10 of them and i've got five byzantine fires i should be able to to get a lot of damage in here so over here i chase uh this knight now continuing to advance forward he has not evacuated everything because you're creating villagers out of this tc right but of his 42 villagers he only has 19 of them here which is a very different approach than me i've got uh how many is that? 27. So I, I guess it's kind of similar. I'm taking cows out here and trees. I mean, it's very hard to play. And I'm hoping to send more army in to hit the, uh, the, the land area for him. Like the mainland area. Because I know he's got a tower there. But I'm also still hoping to kill fishing ships. So there's a lot of activity still on water. Now the fish, I don't know how important they are at this stage. Because the, the fish are rather spread out. But they do obviously still bring in resources for him. But I, I've hit a point now as a player where I feel like, okay, I've done enough on water. I'm killing so much. I don't even need to focus on it anymore. This is the perfect thing for you in, in my position because you could just focus on the other things. And he's still paying attention to this all the time. Again, another reason why I think Byzantines and the Fires will be really good on this map. And what am I able to focus on? Well, the second TC. So there's that. More villagers evacuating now. Knight now going in underneath his wood line. The knight did a little spinorama there. And he's almost in the castle age here. He tries to go for a quick gate. That doesn't work out. And the tower fire is slowly weakening the knight. But I should be able to get a kill as long as he doesn't have perfect micro here. 
and end up getting a kill or two. Knights underneath the tower. This is really good. And then over here, I just lost a monk to a small army that he sent forward. <laughs> and my villagers have to evacuate. Like, I also lost a knight. I've added siege here. I wanted to push him. And then there's still some random fire ships around. I eventually lost my knight. And Eco KD looking really good for us. It is 13 to 3. Res collected very close though. Like his resources collected shot up. I was ahead of him for a while now, but now he's actually collected more resources than me, which is really interesting. I think this eco looks a whole lot cleaner than whatever this is. I think that's probably a big part, but the goal for me obviously is to is to sort that out. So yeah, I think some people at lower ranks might choose to just delete um, this TC and just like leave with everything. Obviously, at a high level, you want to keep everything working. So you're still always going to have this exposed area. This is still really important. My monk is around to protect the scorpions. I am unlucky not to get a conversion there, but... Yeah, so there's, there's three relics in the middle here, guys. I already collected one of them. And I obviously... I played a role in the decisions on these maps. <laughs> right? So I... I remember, like, I'm like, yeah, I think relics in the middle on this can be another reason that people don't forget about it. So, like, I, as we've tweaked the maps, have had, played a huge role in that. So, I was, it's kind of cheating. <laughs> because I'm like, yeah, relics in the middle, they're going to swing games. And then here I am, you know, having already made notes about it, trying to do the same thing. Now, I'm going to drop a monastery here, too, because there's relics. In the north, we always have this. There's always a relic there. I kind of like how pretty that is with the little road. And there is some level of consistency there. I have a big economic lead at the moment. Taking a big vill lead on three TCs. And these scouts now come in for him. And I'm able to convert. But the monks have to be careful because the archers are now diving. And it, Pepper, I think, can recognize he's behind at the moment. So he's trying to find any engagement he can. And he's going to prevent me from getting these relics. Those archers were still just feudal age archers. So I think in some ways that's a really nice engagement for him. And again, we are... At this point, looking at so many different areas, it looks like I've made a few more fire galleys. So I might be able to retake water completely here. But this is where you're looking. It's really hard as a player, right? Because if you look away for a moment, then you have problems in this area. And that, you can tell my recognition now is, oh boy, this is problematic for me. So population's pretty close. I've got the economic lead, but he's got lots of army. And knights can be very strong. Knights can get into different nooks and crannies. Archers are still camping on this gold. I'm going to need to take gold on the mainland. The knights actually running through now are going to find villagers that I have headed towards this area my eco. Crazy, right? Meanwhile, Salted Pepper has to defend from a scout and does so. I don't think I paid attention to that. We have another TC for Pepper. Good stuff. And this is maybe the... Eighth game of evacuation that I had played at this point. And very few of them were were close in the transitions because it is such a, a difficult map to play. The best of the best players are probably going to trade a lot more evenly than we did up to this point. You imagine the eco might be a bit closer than even we have it right now. I was able to get the second relic in here. And he's going to try again to kill another monk and gets it. But we're still slowly thinking about, slowly focusing on this. I'm taking boars, I'm adding farms. And I'm now uh, in a position where my crossing's protected with some navy. I can rewall this. I think that's what I'm doing. And actually, no. I'm just a scared, scared child. I'm going to castle here. And again, it's so tricky, right? Because you, have, I have all this eco over here. He's attacking me with his scout here. Like, he knows I'm exposed there. He's paying attention to that. It's like, where do you castle? And well, I wanted to castle here because he kept annoying me here. It's actually annoying me re-watching this right now. I forgot how consistent he was with the pressure. It was really smart. It's like, every, I'm just trying to get my relics, which I thought was going to be easy for me, and it hasn't been. So, you know, castle does me wonders to, to just breathe a little bit. And actually, Castle kills so many of those archers. Oh my goodness. 
Six or seven kills there. Scout will finish off the rest. Yeah, castle pays for itself almost immediately. So when you think about Byzantines, you think about their cheaper Imperial Age. And I really felt like I was in a good spot to click up to the Imperial Age. I have shot ahead and rest collected. I'm going to have more relics collected, which is obviously great for the long run. And I'm going to drop a TC here. From what I can see, and this is where this game gets really interesting. From what I can see, I've got like a knight or two that I could probably have to deal with soon. But there's not many upgrades. There's just not a whole lot of action coming. From what he can see, like right now, he is trying to evacuate. And my fires are now here, which is another reason, by the way, you can't just give up on water on this map, which is, again, just fascinating. But so so he's like, OK, T90's got water control. T90's got score lead. T90's got all these things. He knows he's behind. So what he's going to do is he's going to make it messy. And he runs forward with villagers and is going to castle drop me. <laughs> I thought I had time. I'm clicking pikemen. I'm going to add more barracks here to defend from this, but this is a perfect castle from Salted Pepper. And it really puts me in a stressful position to try and defend all of this economy that I've spent so much time expanding. And so being Byzantines, having the stronger castle, I figured, well, time for another time for a castle of my own. I had to buy a lot of stone to do this. But I kind of felt like his castle was gonna go up and mine could as well. Now, here's what's really interesting. And, I mean, if you don't already consider this epic and interesting, right? So, his castle's going to go up. Okay, it's very close, but his castle's going to end up going up. Maybe should have added a little bit more suspense there. Sorry. But this is my only goal on the mainland. Right? Which I didn't realize until, like, right when I'm thinking... Like, right around now, when I'm thinking about how am I going to make Trebs out of this castle to push this back. Now, he is making petards, and he is going to make ramps. Like, he's going to send everything at this because of my lead and the, the expectation that I'm probably going to be in the Imperial Age. And I'm thinking, I, I'm expecting that he's going to do that, and I'm trying to decide on how I deal with anything that comes in from that castle. I did convert some fire ships of mine earlier, which I showed briefly, but again, it's been messy. And I've got a 20 villager lead. I'm on the way to the Imperial Age. And quite frankly, I've, I've dealt pretty well with the pressure. I'm still able to take this gold. Castle isn't denying it. And even though he's being a little nerd, repairing his ram, I should be okay as long as I can make a couple trebuchets here. Now, I didn't actually know he was going petards. I, 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 will, I will be honest. Like, if I was fresh, if I hadn't just spent my whole day casting... I probably would have been able to think logically like I'm presenting myself right now. I just thought, if this castle goes down, so what? I'll make a new one, basically. that That's where my brain went, and clearly I, you know, I, I'm trying to make it difficult for him here and sacrificing more villagers for whatever stupid reason I was. But we're going to drop a castle over here, and that's going to be a whole lot more petards from him. And this castle is pretty far away as well, if he really wants to get over here. So, 124 pop for me. Now, behind this, his eco is untouched. So, he's able to do all of this. It's really not the biggest eco, but he's able to focus on that. He's able to focus on this. It is 4 to 4 on relics. There's 7 relics. Oh, wait. How does he have... I'm actually... I'll have to count how many relics there are, honestly. I thought there was only 7 relics on the map. But I must be wrong. I know Armenians do get one when they build a fortified church, but we can break that down later. Again, I figured... I can push this back with Trebs. Rams, I can just fight with my Vils. He can't really get in too close to this Trebuchet. And I've got Pikemen already when he's going back. So I, I don't know about you guys. I don't know if you're feeling stressed by all this action. But a lot happens, right? A lot of things are happening. And it really adds a lot of skill elements to the water play, the land play, and the timings. Which is peak Age of Empires for me. And... Also, the scouting of where the opponent goes with various things is important, too. He's trying to be sneaky here and take out my uh, my Treb. The villagers are able to take care of that. I'm going to take this castle down from him. Eventually take down these buildings. He's now building a backup castle. And he's on the way to Imp. And he is getting infantry upgrades. So, interesting from him. Obviously, he's seen Pikemen. And I am... Very much feeling like this is an unlosable game. 
still have a massive economy. Even if it's messy, even if there's a T90 farm here or there, there's a couple of them. You just got to consistently produce villagers at eco, get upgrades. And I'm currently doing that. So I think we'll see a lot of this on this map. I think stonewalling these choke points makes a lot of sense. So just going to wall this up so he can't... So, so I get to decide on when the attacks happen and not him. Water is kind of a non-factor at this stage. I do think maybe adding some fires here could be good. Um, maybe at this stage of the game, he could delete this TC. Like, I'll be curious to see what people do. But I see this castle, and I'm like, really? You've got a castle up, and I've got trebs already? This is amazing for me. So I'm just going to pack up my trebs, bring the trebs forward. And I'm not going to trickle treb, because that's something I say in my cast all the time. Always have four trebs. And kind of the textbook type of play with the with the treb push is build a castle next to where your trebs are going to deploy and just keep pressuring the enemy. Massive score lead here. I am going to drop some archer ranges because I already have pike tech. I'm not seeing any knights from him anymore. And he is going for ferreters. Now, Armenians are new. And I think so far in Hidden Cup Qualifier, everyone's been talking about their navy and their economy. With Ferreters, and then it, once he completes Champion, their Champions have 100 HP. It adds HP to their Warrior Priests, but also their Champs, which is very strong. Now, I'm Byzantines, and I have two castles, actually three castles. And so when you're Byzantines, you never ever think someone's going to go Champions against you, because you when you have castles, right? Because you can make the Cataphract, which is really good against Infantry. So I'm not expecting this in the slightest. Again, it's been a long day. And I'm just, at this point, I'm thinking this game is over. Let's continue to push him and just end this one that we can talk about the map, maybe go again. Because pretty much every night we're passing along feedback. I did see the barracks though. Oh no, I didn't see the barracks. Okay, so I didn't see the barracks here. Sorry. I sent the scout through, I guess the scout and missed it. And I'm going for yet another castle. Still don't see it continuing to castle right next to where my trebs will go to hit his eco. And now I see two-handed sword. Look at these things have a lot of HP. And champions are great against pikes. They're great against skirms, which I'm currently making. So what I immediately do is I queue up hand cannons. Now it is in these ranges, but it's behind the skirm. So it's going to take a minute. Still though, you've got to think castle, maybe with ballistics, which I'm now getting, that the castles are going to end up getting some kills. And I am getting some kills. And I am mixing in some cataphracts. And I'm still just looking at this like, okay, well, that that was sloppy. We've got this game, right? We've got this game. And I do have this game. We've got champs on the way. We've got skirms, adding a couple more ranges. Good stuff. I'm going to send the cataphract here. I've got tons more stone to work with. And the hand cannons are now out. And the castle has ballistics, which it didn't before. And we're going to eventually clear this up. Now, he's got a lot of production. Like, <laughs> he's got 30 units in queue. It's not champion yet. And so now he's going to come in with rams. And I'm still, like, my eco is still not fully set up yet when it comes to farms. I do not have a ton of food. I have 28 on food. So food is an issue that I'm going to have to deal with. Now, the range units are not so good against the rams. So cataphracts could be helpful here, so I'm just going to add a couple. Block printing from him coming in for his monks. But guys, he's at 60 on food now. So 60 on food, he can spam a lot more. Now again, I'm like, I have this game won. This is like, sure, we're going to maybe lose a castle. Sure, we're Byzantines, but I'm just going to make another castle. There we go. And I've got, what, eight hand cannons now? I'm also mixing in the dramas. I'm like... What more? I've already had this game won. What more can I do? We can add dramas from the from the water. We drop this forward castle, right? When you when you have control of one area, you control the other. That's just classic Age of Empires. But Salted Pepper notices this, and Salted Pepper has taken out this castle. And Salted Pepper has not denied this one, but he is aware of it, and he has champion on the way. So my castle here, I've walled in the vills. So again, it's fine. This will likely complete. I'm paying attention. Here, Cataphract defending. Or so I thought. We'll see how that goes. Push here. Continuing. I've added some Cataphracts. 
Hoping the cataphracts are enough. Now I'm starting to panic. Oh no. I, I actually, I need more cataphracts. Uh, maybe I need to get other techs. <laughs> I'm like, how, how is this? I have hand cannons and I have cataphracts. How is this game not over yet? Oh no, it is champion now. Um, oh no, he's built, he brought over an archer to deny the castle. That's at 80%. All these vills are dead. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, I mean, from, from the bird's eye view, I mean, look at his economy. There's golden stone everywhere here. He has just as many relics as I do. And he has so many of these freaking champions. I mean, this, this castle here has 31 kills. And still, he's just got champions all the time. So again, I'm still thinking, like, cataphracts are needed. I can just go hand cannons, and we'll add stables, and we'll go for Hussar, just to, like... I actually don't have a reasoning for it. This is what I'm doing at this time. And where's my Dramans? Okay, so I remember this. So this, my thinking was Dramans will range the shoreline and destroy. Which I think it would. And they're going to be on the way soon. Maybe we'll take out the fortified church. Maybe we'll take out some houses or something. I only have 10 hand cannons and 2 cataphracts. So that's the unit type that you would need against these champions here. And he's got some capped rams. I'm seeing more hand cannons on the field than I have in a long time. And I know that's the key, so we'll back him up here. And then cataphracts still go in to protect this castle. 56 champions for my opponent. Trebs are on the way. Rams are still going to town here. These champions have 100 HP. It is incredibly strong. Meanwhile, Salted Pepper has a castle here. He's making Trebs to push this area, which I haven't thought about in a long time. And this is getting increasingly awkward for me. And it is becoming more and more aware that I do not have this game and that these champions just can't be stopped. I mean, Byzantine light cap isn't it, right? That's not a good choice here. Cataphracts I need castles for, and I'm not going to have the castles much longer. And the consistency and the spam here from Salted Pepper with the Rams and the champions is slowly overwhelming me. And, you know, the panic has set in. As I'm sitting here looking at the screen and I'm just like, oh, I think we're dead. We've got champions in on my eco. There's like 20 villagers there. The castle is down over here. I'm trying to drop another castle to try and treb down his castle. But there's champions here as well. And Salted Pepper's production, man. At home and then on the front wins the game. And while that is maybe one of the biggest throws I have ever, ever had... It was a well played there from Salted Pepper. I was looking through all the games uh, that I had uh, th on this map, and this was honestly the best one. So I am, I'll be honest, I, I am still a little embarrassed to have brought this to you, and not only brought it to you, but casted it. Because I think with Byzantines, I, I could have maybe had a little bit more resistance there. But what was cool about this game was all the different elements that were utilized, right? What I wanted about for this map is I want the outside to be important. And the outside absolutely was important. Scouting the areas out there, uh, being aggressive out there were huge. We are also really exposed in the middle area, on the starting area on this map, which we also saw. The water in various ways mattered, at various points mattered. For example, really important in early feudal, maybe less important late feudal. Really important early castle, less important in the middle of castle age. Now, at this stage, I guess these ships were patrolled into nothing, but... I do think water control along the shoreline could be useful, too. And um, I think this is also an example of how, if you are aggressive on the the mainland, like the new land, I guess, how you can have success, which Salted Pepper did. That castle bought himself a lot of time, and that time was why he was able to get into champions, and he used that time wonderfully to add a lot of farms. After the game, Salted Pepper said, I have no clue how I won this game. And I said, uh, yeah, me either. But uh, I was just... I was not producing the right units. Look how similar the resources collected were in that game. It definitely wasn't the case a while ago, right? Like, I think you go back, let's say, to 45 minutes. Res collected that that stage should be better for me? Well, no, I think he's just farming away. I think I, I, think I just didn't have the food eco this game compared to him. Yeah, even here, he's got the food eco, so it was a good game. So, yeah, don't judge me too harshly. Uh... I was exhausted, and then we worked hard on this map. There will be tweaks to this map, and I, and I want to show you why we want to add consistency. Because 
Pepper and I tested a lot of different things. And if you can stick with me here, I do have one more thing I want to show you, which is a slightly different approach on this map that I think might be taken during the Hidden Cup main event, but is also extremely risky. Okay, guys, so I think a couple days later, we were playing more games and obviously still on the same map. And Pepper showed me an approach, which is really interesting and actually inspired uh, some tweaks we made to the map. So you can see the berries here, the cow and the boar. At this point, um, this is something that we, we didn't have that consistent with the spawn. So the main version is going to have the berries here, four deer next to it, and the boar somewhat close by. But at this point, sometimes the boar and the berries would be would be close or far to that crossing, okay? So Pepper's gone for the Portuguese here. I've gone for the Lithuanians. We were testing a bunch of different sieves, and I, uh, I wanted to go for the early dock. Lithuanians start with the extra food, so you can just chop these trees earlier, and they get to the fishing ships earlier, and it really helps your eco. So my thinking on the meta of this map at this point is that it would be feudal age, some navy, some land army adapts towards castle age, and then eventually really big late game, right? And with all the relics, I was thinking Lithuanians could be really solid. And then, of course, you know, their late game is pretty good as well if you get to the units you want to. So I am fully expecting him to go for this approach I just mentioned. Now I'm speeding up because we just casted a game, right? Now, here... I'm just scouting his area, and I see this, and I'm like, ooh, but wait a second. The important thing isn't winning. The important thing is actually testing. So I don't kill the vill. Because I, I know that if I kill that vill, it ruins his strat. And so I forgot what I, that I said this. I said for testing purposes. So I let the villager live, right? But now, I'm like, interesting. Yes. He took the he took the boar. That's not something I would have tried, right? Because my boar's over here, and I think that's a pretty long walk. So clearly, he wants a little bit more food. And I am thinking, oh no, what if he goes fast castle into something like organ guns? So immediately, my mind shifts, and I'm thinking, okay, we should aim to kill his fish. I didn't find my rhino, by the way, which is really annoying. We also like made the rhino spawns a little bit easier to find. But So yeah, already I'm like, okay, I need to kill this fish. And then we need to do something against organ guns. That's where my brain was right now. He is going fast castle. He is the two rhinos. He also scouted the outer areas of the map to find some extra cows. Remember, in Hidden Cup, the, the players have like a week and a half period to test the new maps. These maps have never been played competitively publicly before. So the goal is like to have people cook up some strats potentially against people who may then be more meta players. Who are just going to go for what I just said. Like the feudal age approach. Basically what I'm doing. So I'm going to go galleys to go kill his fish. Thinking I don't need to do much more than that. I think just two galleys can kill his fish. And we're going to still just speed up here. Sorry if this becomes a longer video. But I think the first game was the best game. And then this game was something completely different. Which got me really, really excited about the map. So it is interesting, right? He's on gold. He's got food underneath his TC. These extra cows were all brought in by that scout. Plus, he has the goats. And behind this, he just made a lumber camp. It's like I established in the first game. You have food, gold, stone. doesn't matter what resource you have in your hands. But if you make a lumber camp, mill, mining camp, TC, you get the resources. And so he goes blacksmith from here. And then he goes stable out here. Now, meanwhile, I've added the galleys. I'm going to go try and kill his fish. This is really unfortunate for me that that fishing ship got away. And I'm trying to punish him. And behind this, I have immediately added fishing ships. So I he will not have fish, but I will have that to recover with food. I also have left this area to go out for the hunt. Uh, sorry, not the hunt, rather the berries, which I know is going to help me as well. And now I scout that he has a stable. But he scouts that I have villas here. <laughs> so I didn't do as good a job as I probably should have at killing his fish. I got distracted and it's a really hard map. So those two fishing ships should probably be killed. Again, I was initially thinking organ guns. Don't remember if I saw that stable and was willing, was ready to act on it. But guys, this is a fast castle here from him. 
And so I, I yeah, okay, I clearly knew there was going to be knights. So I'm trying to wall this up real quick. And look what I have to do. <laughs> it's like, this is extremely awkward, right? And he also did add a fire galley or two out here too. So I've got to protect my fish. And like, this felt in the moment impossible to stop because the knights they don't go there they now go here and i've added some spears and it's just like this crazy game now maybe i should have done my own cast with this but you're gonna see why i didn't do you know a standalone cast with this and i kind of tied it into the the first cast of evacuation because this is just it feels impossible to stop so what's going to be the meta is it going to be feudal age is it going to be fast castle here what's going to happen like in Hidden Cup, the players can't see what other players have done and just practice that themselves. Because by the time games are covered, players are already in or out after the first two rounds. So it's like it adds this really interesting strategic element, which is what we wanted on these maps. And Pepper is, is gone for a really nice approach. He's actually like taking the boars here too for food. There was no world. I didn't think he had a TC. I didn't think he was booming here at all. And um no, I'm going monks from home, getting the pikeman upgrade, hoping to defend from this. And it is like a really close game right now. Like th this should maybe be its own cast, in all honesty. Because th right now, res collected shows I am ahead, right? The fishing ships have helped. And yeah, I haven't lost that much worker-wise. But this becomes, I realize here, I am, I am too penned in here and trapped up against the map. And the siege ends up getting some really big shots. And I basically got to escape. <laughs> really wild stuff here so he's chasing me now and so thankfully like my pikes are a bit faster my villagers aren't though and he's looking everywhere he also knows i added monks so he adds light cav it's crazy stuff and yet now at this point and this is why i've sped through things have turned around pretty hard on me and and this is really tricky for me i mean he's found me escaping the knights are out here. He's going to kill this. I have 34 economy. He has 55. And there's just no way back for me at this point, which is when I eventually realize and call the GG. Now, this was after like four or five games that we played. And every other game was pretty much what I did. So I am the meta player in this case. And Salted Pepper just completely destroyed me with his strat. I apparently continued to play on because I thought he was that all in. I didn't realize I was this far behind. So... Um, I'm going to stop it there. This map should produce some excellent games in the main event of Hidden Cup. I would love to hear your thoughts on the map. Uh, like I said, the versions that I've shown you here is one of the testing versions. There will be, it will be, the main key is the consistency with the generation. Of course, consistency is key um, for fairness sake and planning. And it will actually be easier to bring in that third boar on the version that we use because the berries deer and then the boar will always be right around this area on this little road we have so if anything the strat that he just did will be easier and then i don't know like what are people are going to find out with their scheming is it actually is that the meta is this always going to be fast castle if players are going out for that boar they should probably do what i just did and at the start and use the scout to kill the vill right because his villager should have died because my scout was there it's like if you're going Feudal Age, should you always send your scout there to block the boar? Probably. I, there's just all these things that happen, right? So that's pretty much it. I could probably talk about this for another hour, but that's just one game, well, one and a half games, I guess, on this new map evacuation. And I'm really hoping this produces some good games in the main event of Hidden Cup 5. Hidden Cup 5 is coming February 25th through March 3rd. I put more time, energy, effort, money... Uh, is there anything else in life? I don't know. I have put everything that I can into this and I have never put as much into this as I have for anything else. So um, if you guys would like to be entertained, if you would like some high level en entertainment and uh, of course Age of Empires 2, please show up, help break records with us. It'll be live streamed on YouTube. It'll also be live streamed on Twitch on those dates. And uh, again, I can promise you that I can't do any better than the main event will be. I really think it'll be a great time for everyone involved. Uh, we'll have giveaways, we will have guessing games on top of all the usual content. And as always, thanks for watching the videos, thanks for having interest. And if you can't make it, it's all good. There's going to be videos too, so you can enjoy it later on. But Evacuation is one of my favorite maps now in Age of Empires 2. I'm very excited to see what this map will bring. 
And uh, keep an eye out over the next week or so. I will possibly bring more EVAC games to you. As well as another new map, which was just introduced, Hidden Forts. Which I think is also enjoyable and different in many ways. Thanks again, guys. Appreciate the love. And I'll see you guys around. See you next time.